Let me hop this stream really quick. Right behind me, up in the pine tree up there, there's two bald eagles perched on their nest. Hop back over. Can you see them right behind me there? Right up on the other side of the buds of those trees. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. And welcome to this week's upload. I haven't been outside painting very much over the past couple of weeks. I'm spending my time planning for a workshop. I'm teaching summer school this summer, so I'm thinking about the curriculum for that as well. I finished up a bunch of commission paintings, which I wanted to get done. And now everything is kind of out of the way and I have a little bit of time just to paint. We came the wrong way. I was too busy filming my intro and talking on camera that I went the wrong way. I don't know if we can cross here. And if we can't, we have to walk all the way back around. This is the marsh. You can't really get around all of this. Maybe something good will happen. Maybe we'll find a marsh marigold. Maybe if we go up here, maybe the dogs are leading me in the right way. So I'm looking for a log or something that's across the marsh that I can use as a bridge and just walk across. Like this tree would have been perfect if it was across the marsh bed. That would have made a nice bridge. Enjoying these flowers down here. I can see some skunk cabbage coming up. Everything is so green. This is where I crossed over last time and I tried to toss a log over the stream but I see some marsh marigolds right over there so I think I should be able to make this I'm gonna try and see how far I can go out it gets very slick right there whoa it gets really slick right there I'm just gonna try and pop right over this thing haha <laughs> I did it come on yeah Sydney we found the first marsh marigolds of the season Nice, Porter. Porter made it over. Here's another one. I'm gonna get out here over the next couple days and do a painting of these. Maybe tomorrow. Awesome. That's really cool. What is that? There's some kind of a bone right here. There's a whole bunch of bones. There's the skull right there, I see teeth. You okay, fish? Fish tried to jump just now. And she didn't make it very well. Here's the teeth. Must be a cow. There's the teeth. There's the eye socket. That bone is what caught my attention. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and I'm, wa I'm out walking with the dogs, exploring the marsh this afternoon. It's the second week of April. Something's squirming around down there on the ground. It's the second week of April, and thanks so much for checking out this week's video. We got some more marsh marigolds in bloom right here. Oh. Enjoying the marsh marigolds. In today's video, we're going to... In today's video, the first thing that we're going to do is check out my new lightweight plein air setup. I've had my new easel out a couple of different times. I'm going to show you exactly what I have in my setup. I'm going to show you all the gear that I'm carrying with me when I'm going out painting. That's going to transition into, oh, here's some more marshmallow golds. That's going to transition into a plein air painting session from today in Baraboo. You can tell it's springtime out here. Everything is changing. It seems like just a month ago on this channel, we had walks out here through the snow, through the terrible winds and through the cold. Another marshmallow gold. things have started to bloom and, and it's springtime now. We had a series of really warm days, but over the past week, it's been so rainy and cloudy and dreary and windy and hard to get out. But I made it out this morning for a plein air painting in Baraboo. There was a magnolia tree out in the Baraboo Bluffs. So we're gonna check that out. But for the time being, let's just enjoy our walk through this marsh out here. Everything is green. Everything is springtime. And I hope that it's nice where you are as well. All right, let's finish off our walk. We'll check out the easel. We'll check out the painting. We'll check out some racquetball. I don't know. 
I'm getting stuck right now. I didn't even come out today looking for the cowslips. They just appeared when I started to think about them. Let's enjoy our walk and let's check out that easel. Okay, I'm wearing my new lightweight easel, but unfortunately I just broke my little tripod for my GoPro. All that stuff, like it's just cheap plastic these days. Everything is cheap plastic. And that might be a little theme for this section of the video. So I'm gonna figure out a way to hold my camera up and then we'll get right into it. The first thing of course is the easel and it straps to the backpack this is a skateboard backpack this is a stan right 100 i was really excited to get this and i started to come up with a lot of ideas but then when it came here everything was broken there was a lot of plastic pieces you can see this was the first thing that broke there's supposed to be a top support for your panel right there that broke off there was also two little arms that are supposed to hold the bottom of your panel on this easel those all broke and it was also too short that's all right i had already made the purchase so i had nothing to lose so i did make a bunch of modifications on my own to make it something that was usable this easel was way too short so i added i added on these leg extensions now this is an old easel this i'm guessing this easel that i have here is 20 years old because and i think that they stopped selling these around 2012 or 2013. the reason i found out about this easel and got the idea to make this setup was that there's an old thread on wet canvas and wet canvas was a internet site where people used to discuss their plein air equipment and there was a guy on there who had this setup I'll put the link to that discussion into the description. But he had something kind of similar to what I have set up. So right there, I'm able to quickly and easily get this easel uh, set up, up to size. Not crazy about the way that this leg action works. And on that wet canvas thread, the original poster took an idea from the Take It easel. The reason that this easel was interesting to me is because the original poster had come up with a way to combine the Gloucester easel with something a little bit more lightweight. So the the Take It easel, which is the contemporary Gloucester easel, the Gloucester easel is a really is a sturdy easel that painters on the Northeast have been using for many years and it's a very stable easel. The person on wet canvas found this way to make this sort of shelf system which was borrowed from the Gloucester easel. So this is the palette that I'm using. I just reloaded my palette so I've got a bunch of fresh paint on there. I just refilled the piles of paint so it's a fresh palette and I'm just going to set it onto the easel and lock it into place. Still connected, but see, I locked it into place just from its own tension. And this is actually really a sturdy setup. I was pleased with the way that it worked out. The Tupperware for this palette, it's kind of like something that you would see at a bake sale in the 80s. Uh, this is a Masterson palette, which is just this Tupperware. And I added into it, I added into it a gray tempered glass palette. I found that palette. It's called a posh palette. It was at a art supply store in Madison. I was looking at it online that morning at school and I ended up going to the art supply store and it just so happened to be there and it was on sale for $10 each where it's like $30 on online. So I got a pretty good deal and I grabbed a couple of those. It's a heavy palette because it is glass, but this is very sturdy to mix on and I like using a glass palette. It takes me back to the early years of oil painting for me where everybody was working on glass palettes in my oil painting class. Um, loaded with paint. This has been this has been a sturdy setup for me so far. The top of the Tupperware part of the palette is my value scale. 
Also on the bag is, is my lower canvas support, which I have to kind of uh, screw into place. This is actually something off of the Beauport easel. My shirt is dipping into the purple paint right now. I can carry two wet panels in my backpack as well. This is a very lightweight panel holder. These are two rubber bands that I got at that same art store. And I can carry two wet paintings face to face. This is a 12 by 16 inch size of panel, which happens to be a size that I really like working with. I'll show you that even though the top of this easel came to me broken, I can still get it to work. Even though this easel came to me broken, I can still get the top of the canvas to kind of wedge into place. And actually, this is very sturdy as well. I haven't had any problems with wobble. And that's something that I have been having problems with with my French easel. And also the planner setup that I was using this winter is that the panel would just wobble all over the place. So once that's all in place, of course, I carry my painting medium there, my brushes, and an extra tube of white paint, my color isolator, my mineral spirits. All these things are carried in a, another bag and my mineral spirits can clip right there. And I'm ready to go. I also carry in here my grayscale markers and my value viewing glasses. And finally my sketch. This is a marker sketchbook that I have inside this kind of school supplies holder. And this has all of my sketches in it. I'll give you a quick, a quick sketchbook page through. This was yesterday. I did a nice painting, but the camera ended up not recording all the footage. My GoPro was acting weird yesterday. It was super cold, but it was a beautiful neighborhood scene. There's the Sunflower Farm Commission painting. There's two other commission paintings. I just got this sketchbook early last week. And uh, here's the painting from today. This is my whole plenary painting setup. I took it on a little hike earlier in the week. It hiked in really well. It hiked out really well. So I'm able to paint 12 by 16, which is a great size for landscape painting. I could paint larger as well. I'll make new panel holders and a couple more sizes. That backpack is very comfortable. It was only $15. And I'll put the link to that backpack in the bio as well. And you can know that if you use that same Masterson palette, you can fit the palette in the backpack. And that's a new thing for me. I've never had a backpack that fits into a palette and I've never had a Tupperware cover for my palette before either. It's something new to try. And I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. The paint hasn't dried out on the palette. When I hiked around with it, the paint really stayed put. If I use some E6000 and you see this little wooden lip, this little wooden ledge that the paint is sitting on, I glued that in place with some strong adhesive. And that's just so when I come through, I can just wipe my paper towel off across the palette and I can clean more of the mixing area. Let's head to Baraboo now for a little overcast, early springtime plein air painting. Welcome to springtime in Baraboo. This was a really nice day of painting. It was very cold and I was actually having a little bit of troubles with the GoPro uh, at the start of this painting session. So you can see my little values sketch. My marker sketch is on the ground just to the left of the palette right here. I wasn't able to record myself creating that value sketch, which is too bad. But here I am mixing my colors on my palette that I'm gonna use to get the painting started. You can already see that there's a nice springtime harmony happening on the palette and creating that harmony and setting it in place is something that I like to do by pre-mixing my initial piles of paint on the canvas. GoPro also didn't record me making the sketch on the panel today, but here I am laying in the painting. I knew that today's painting was going to have a lot of color shifts in it and so I wanted to work quickly and accurately to get the painting started. That way it would save me plenty of time in the second half of the painting session to add in a lot of those color shifts and restate all of the major masses.
Well, I've got this painting up and running. Today's painting is gonna be full of all these different color shifts. And I had to get the basic shapes laid in in their appropriate values before I started doing that. The foreground is kind of a, uh, a neutral warm color. It's kind of a brown orange color. And I haven't laid that green in yet. So when I lay that on top, there's gonna be a little bit of a color vibration. I set this painting up to have some color vibration and some things like that happening. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on the palette and I'll probably spend a couple more hours working on this painting this afternoon just to bring it up in harmony and to say what I want to say about springtime in Baribu. I am finishing up up here. School is gonna get out in a couple of minutes and this neighborhood is gonna fill up with cars and kids and I either leave now or I'm gonna get gridlocked and I'm gonna have kids climbing all over my easel and here's the painting. Had a great time up here. I spent a lot of time digging through the palette. Check out that palette. My favorite part of spring is the blossoming trees, just a new sign of life and the guy is mowing the lawn right over there so i have this nice scent of fresh cut grass in the air as well and that's another part about spring that i love there's daffodils on the ground i'm just in a beautiful neighborhood and i'm gonna keep this going i will check in with you guys soon thanks so much have a good day here is my initial sketch here is the painting